It's time for Around the Ozark Sports Scene, brought to you by Fast Break Sports, the largest selection of cards and card supplies in southwest Missouri. Now here's your host, Scott Perrier. Welcome in to another edition of Around the Ozark Sports Scene. I am Scott Purrier. As always, big thanks to you for tuning in this week to the uh, podcast. And our special guest today is the second-year head coach for the Missouri State Football Bears, Ryan Beard. Coach, thanks for joining me. Scott, thanks a lot for having me, man. Absolutely. I always enjoy our time to, to catch up on things and, and appreciate your in-depth nature. You don't duck from any questions. That's uh, refreshing in the, the world of media and journalism these days, but um, not a lot of guys are going to do that. Yeah, I, I think if you can be uniquely you, and you know, some people will love it, some people won't, and that's that's just fine, man. I I believe in authenticity. I think your father-in-law had that approach, didn't he, too, as a head coach, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. I think <laughs> again, you you can't try to be someone you're not, and you have your foundations of beliefs, and um, you know, you stick to your guns and and let people know exactly who you are. Well, Bears football's hot right now in the Ozarks, uh, off to a 3-2 and two start. Uh, thrilling 38-31 home win over Youngstown State before about 12,000-plus on Saturday. Um, give me kind of your assessment through five games uh, so far, and I know the thing I think that's really cool is you've had a chance to win all five games. Yeah, there's no doubt. I, I really like the team. I like where we're at right now. Um, and, you know, we, we played tough those first two losses, and we, we learned and we and we grew from the reasons why you lost. Because one thing that we always talk around here is that winners, you have to learn, win, winning is a learned habit. Um, you don't just sit in a classroom or a film room and the coach stands up in front and goes, hey guys, who's ready to win? And everybody raises their hand. Well, of, of course you do. Are you Are you willing to, you know, go through the fire of, you know, what it takes late in games to win, what what our process is during the week to win. Um, and, again, I think b- through both of those first two games, we learned a lot about who we were and uh, were able to overcome some adversity. And it's paid off the last three weeks and rattled off a few good wins. You know, you talk about the adjustments your team made after the two losses. What about Ryan Beard as a, as a head coach now in, in that second campaign? Yeah, I think we've been – um, better foundationally from the the very start of season two. I think we really got to settle in this off season of who we are, what we believe in, um, kind of really more of what a, a, a Ryan Beard ran organization will look like um, with the, about our core values and kind of what we represent on and off the field. And I think, again, kind of like we talked about in the opening of the segment about being, you know, authentic and knowing who you are, because, you know, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else should believe in you either. Getting great play from your quarterback, uh, senior Jacob Clark, as expected. Uh, you know, top 10 in the nation in, in passing and touchdowns thrown. Coming off a, a 325 and three touchdown effort on Saturday. What has he meant in terms of bringing that stability to the position and being that rock offensively? Because you look around right now and even in the NFL, you know, you lose that starting quarterback and things can go south in a hurry. And, and what's Jacob meant to this team so far? Scott, first and foremost, it's all about your trigger man. I don't care if you're you're watching the best pop corner team in the country or the best power four country in the in team in the country. It's you got to have a great quarterback, and ours has played extremely well. Um, the the thing about Jacob that you see on film, and even when you watch him in his day to day, is his ability to process information quickly. Um, he sees the field extremely well. And the the reason that, you know, we want to hit on that is because the way he distributes the football, you know, you see our tight ends getting in the mix. You see almost every wide out getting touches as well as, you know, in pressure situations, being able to know, hey, I got a six man pressure coming. I need to dump the ball off to our running back and let him run up the sideline for 40 yards. Um, Jacob has been extremely efficient and i think that has a ton to do with his decision making because you know as you saw last week in the in the big game versus youngstown state they were overplaying the the coverage so he took what they gave him and ran for some great first downs and some game-changing plays um just his his ability to develop in the offseason 
is is coming to fruition right now, and it's it's going to get better and better as we go. Now, I know that uh, Miami, the U, has a ninth year, I believe, tight end on their team. Is this it for Jacob, or are you going to find a way to keep him <laughs> around for one more? No, he's got one more. He's oh, he already does. talked about yeah, he's already talked about being excited and the leading us into Conference USA in our first year um in the FBS, which is really, really good news for our football team and should be great news for, for all the bear faithful. Absolutely. And and nothing like that experience at that position and especially, right? A kid that's been around that no, long. It's, yeah. It's it's a great thing. I know, you know, we we've all had to go to the doctor's office unfortunately and the the value of a of a doctor that's personable who you trust who you have the utmost faith in i I look at that the same as the quarterback position because he affects every single person on the team the way he carries himself the way he goes about his business and and jacob certainly has a calming effect for our football team because they know he gives us a chance to win every single football game by week this week, uh, then you guys head to a number 15 illinois state which is off to three and two start as well on october 12th uh, for the Valley opener. What, what is the, um, bye week look like for Ryan Beard? I, I know that it's not just a time to kick your feet up and watch college football, especially in today's uh, recruiting world where you got to find a bunch of players now for that transition too, don't you? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, now again, me and you have talked, you know me fairly well. I'm a, I'm a football fundamentalist. I believe firmly that winning is the best form of recruiting that you can possibly do mm-hmm. so we're we're still actually going to have some good physical practices these coming days to where we still have a lot to improve on as a football team that we have right now with the guys on our roster working on pad level working on the different intricacies by position um so we will we're not one of those teams that's going to take the week off and you know pat each other on the back we're going to get after it we're going to work and continue to progress our current roster but you know, we're already watching film of recruits. We're staying, uh, staying a few nights to make sure we're calling the right guys, getting things set up for um, some of our coaches to get on the road later on this week and go see some guys that we're targeting for our future. How pivotal is this year in terms of being the transition year to uh, Conference USA and, and building that excitement behind the program and that buzz? Because, I mean, going to a new league and a new level with FBS – in itself is going to have some buzz, but if you guys went out there and were, you know, laid an egg, won one or two games, it'd be a little tough to to rally that. I mean, was that a thought process going in as we, we really need to have – I mean, you need, want to have a good year anyway, but this year in particular we need to have a good year and, and build that buzz. Sure, I think I'd be naive to say that, um, you know, there wasn't some extra emphasis on making sure we win now and, and giving everybody – um, you know, some positive signs for the future. And I think we've done that. You know, even in the first two games that we lost, we were extremely competitive. We played hard, played well, uh, just just didn't get it done at certain points in the game. But, I, I, again, I really like where our football team's at. We, it's a gritty, tough, hard-fought win last week because you've been familiar with the Valley, you know, way longer than me. Anybody can win any game in the Valley. There, there's a ton of great football teams. There's a ton of great coaches um, so for us to be able to be competitive in our last season um, should bode well moving forward. It, it really is the SEC of F- FCS, isn't it? There's there's no question. And, you know, people are always – people from different conferences, they even might roll their eyes and shake their heads. But you got to look at the numbers. Look mm-hmm. at the number of national titles. Look at the number of playoff contenders. And then, you know, once we get our seven teams into the playoffs, Look Look who wins the first, second rounds until we start playing Valley teams again against each other. You know, I mean, it's, it, this isn't just something we thought of in make-believe air. And then look at the pros around um, the NFL, where they came from. A lot of the FCS guys are, are Valley student-athletes. It's a new world over at Missouri State now, uh, you know, with a new athletic director and Patrick Ransdale, new president, and Biff Williams. You know, that's not easy for a coach, a sitting coach, so to speak, you know, with with new people that are your bosses coming in. Um, talk about that transition, your thoughts on both, and, and, you know, what it's done for you and your outlook going forward for Missouri State football. Yeah, I honestly don't think we could have hired two better men for those roles. Um, President Biff Williams has done a tremendous job at Utah Tech and in, in the past places he's been. He believes in the student-athlete experience, and he also believes in not only student-athlete experience, but 
he has a broad vision for what he wants Missouri State to look like, and I think that's important because, you know, once I start talking about Patrick Ransdale, it's a little more sports specific, but I think Biff will bring another level of experience for every student on campus, not just our athletes. And I think that's important to keep in mind as well, because he's extremely well-rounded, intelligent, just a, just a good person, good family man in general. And then Patrick Ransdell, um, again, he's a competitor. We have a shared vision of what we think this place could be. Um, and he's got great pedigree. I don't know if you know, his father was Gary Ransdell, the president of Western Kentucky when I played there, as well as when we made the transition to FBS. And there would be no you know, five-time Conference USA champion Western Kentucky without Gary Ransdell's leadership and guidance. Um, and again, the thing I like about Patrick is he has great vision, but he's also realistic about kind of, you know, some things that we can get going in the short term before we get the facilities, before we get those things that could get years, just some small things for our student athletes to put us on a different level. And I think that's really, really important. And <clears throat> the one thing that you know, I think everyone will have to take a deep breath and realize is just because, you know, we have FBS in front of our name right now, you don't snap your fingers and go from, you know, arguably uh, a middle, middle of the way FCS program with facilities and funding and all those different things you need to be successful and just show up and start dominating an FBS football league. Um, if that makes sense. But oh, yeah. Yeah. We have, a long, we have a long way to go. We've got a lot of um, foundational things to build up to where we actually operate and, you know, look like a Division One football program. So let's say hypothetically you found a, one of those magic lanterns, you know, that you could rub and a genie came out and granted you three <laughs> wishes. What, what would be uh, on the long-term five- to ten-year wish list for Ryan Beard in terms of Missouri State football and things, you know, like what what do you need uh, to really take this team and, and this program and go where you want to go? Yeah, I think I think obviously it, you start with your operating budget and you start with getting more people in the building because I believe that everything in life starts with people and relationships. Um, so we have to be staffed properly. We have to make sure we get, you know, 8, 10, 15 more people in the building um, so you can match the recruiting departments of a, of a Liberty or Western Kentucky. Um, and then, you know, sports nutrition, making sure that we're feeding these young men, um, with a, a fair capacity to what we're asking them to do in the weight room. And we, we train them year round. So we, we need to feed them and give them the nutrition they need to be successful. And then just, just a place that they can be proud of, a locker room that they can go into and not want to just get their stuff and run out because it's so bad. Um, and you know, you're going to probably chuckle when I say this, but we, we, we just need a We need a football building, like a football only building that, you know, D2, D3 schools have that Mm -hmm. is dedicated to football with, you know, offices and the locker room and, you know, weight room possibly, and just places that they can have a space to call their own. I think that will be tremendously important and something that has to happen. You know, I've got an idea, Ryan, that, you know, I mean, if you don't find that lantern, Maybe you and Patrick and Biff could kind of rub on Brent Dunn's bald head, you know, and maybe that because <laughs> that may be the place that it may come from anyway, right? So, I mean, why not try it? Hey, listen, I'm one of those guys. If you sit here and you go, hey, Ryan, this will help your your, your players, your staff, the people around your program, I'm willing to try whatever it takes. Just walk up to him and start rubbing on that forehead next time you see him and, and – See see how he reacts, but uh, uh, I'm sure I'm sure he'd really appreciate that. <laughs> um, I know you've had some people that have really been helping behind the scenes. You know, I, I I've talked to friends and you know the Dennis Himes and Kirk Elmquist and people like that that are that are kind of trying to make things happen from an NIL and and collective standpoint. Can you talk about that and where you are and and where it's going and and what you need? Yeah, the FPA guys have been tremendous. Um, again, I, I speak pretty, pretty frankly. Um, we, we would not even be close to the position we're in right now or be in the position we were in the last few years without the hard work of those men behind the scenes. Um, they're working every day in the community to try to get our players an edge. And uh, again, this year's presence, Kirk Elmquist done a phenomenal job. Um, Dennis Himes been extremely instrumental in that. The Hines family, Trevor Chris and those guys. Uh, we, we've got a tremendous support staff. And, and they understand what it takes because 
there are certain needs that you have to have and you have to make sure <coughs> your players are afforded or they just don't come to your school. They just go somewhere that, that they do get those things and, um, you know, want to have a better student experience there. But my hats are off to those men because they've worked extremely hard and they've put us in a position to be successful. Well, and actually, Trevor, I'm, I was remiss in not mentioning Trevor Chris because that's actually who I was talking to over the weekend. He, uh, We were at a, at a function together, and he was actually in his bear gear, having come from the game. So, you know, you're, you're, you've got the right people kind of building that excitement and the hype men, so to speak, and, and uh, it's, it's building in town, isn't it? It is. It absolutely is. And the people of Springfield are tremendous. I mean, we, we love the community. I love having our family go to church, go to school, and just, you know, be fully involved in this community. There's top-notch human beings. There's great business organizations. And the one thing I do want to hit on is um, everyone always, when they talk about the FPA or they talk about collectives, it always just goes to dollar bills. The one thing that I want to make a statement about is we are pouring into these young men, not only with football and that other stuff, but we have what's called a fifth quarter program. So we're teaching them how to interview. We're teaching them how to eat properly in case they're ever in front of Jerry Jones with a billion dollar offer on the line, you know, that they can operate. And we want to build strong men for our community and for everyone else to enjoy after they're done playing football. And I think that's one thing that is remiss sometimes, but, it's very important for what we do and what we're about here at Missouri State. From a, an NIL standpoint and, and the level that you're at now and that you're going into in FBS, is it trying to have enough to, to lure a kid in or trying to keep the good ones you have? Because it seems like the latter is going to be hard if you have a really good one because you know they may go to, to a Power 4 or Power 5, whatever number we're on now with what the Pac-12 is doing. And, and then, you know, that opportunity to play at that level is, and the money that may be there may be hard to compete with. Is, is it more about the, the luring them in or, or talk about that and, and how you figure out what the right mix is for NIL? Yeah, I think it's a combination of each. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that every six months you have to have a full eval of everything in your program, especially players. And um, one thing I think is paying off this year that you see is the way we've been able to um, retain quality student athletes that are great players um, the Todrick McGee's of the world Jacob Clark PJ Hall has been here five years um, you know those guys and then again the ability to bring in Penn State transfer um, D Townley um, you know bring in and retain Cartier Wright I mean it's I think we've got a great mix now don't get me wrong and I'm a human too and so are you and if someone calls our son and says, hey, I'm going to give you 500000 a year to come play 12 games for me. Mm-hmm. Um, that That's something that they're not going to turn down, and there's something that I'm going to hug them in my office and go, hey, man, you just made life-changing money. There's a lot of people that haven't made that in their whole life. you know. So, so go do that. And I think, again, our honesty approach and realistic approach makes people want to stay here even more. Now, I'm trying to remember. I saw the video. Did you jump into the pool fully clothed for like a hundred grand for uh, the the collective, or what? What was the scenario there, and what will you not do for a hundred grand now? Well, hopefully the price can continue to go up. But I did. <laughs> I had a brand. I had a brand new, sharp looking suit on. Felt like I was, you know, dressed to the nines. And somebody at the at the event mentioned, "Hey, man, I got a surprise for you. We're going to put this in the auction." And I was like, "All right, sure." You know, I didn't know what it was. And they said, okay, Ryan Beard's going to jump in the pool. We started at a million. It got down to 100, 100K. And so I just one upped it and said, I'll just gain her off at full suit and do a little reverse backflip, you know, be a, have everybody have a good time. And that's how it shook out because um, the one thing that I think people love about Missouri State football and they love about just being a part of what we're building is the fact that everybody from the head coach – to the janitor is all in we they the players know and understand that we are working as hard as we possibly can to give them the tools they need to succeed and i think when they see that from their leader it helps trickle down to where everyone knows that their job's important everyone knows that you know the scout team has to give a great look on a wednesday so we can operate efficiently on saturday it's just 
everything is moving in the right direction. I couldn't be more proud of our organization and what we're building here at Missouri State. We touched on this a little bit back in the winter when we talked, but but how has the the current landscape with the portal and and the the movement of of kids, you know, here, there, and everywhere, changed the approach for recruiting for you guys in terms of of high school kids, you know, and and you know, I, I hear out there that you know parents and coaches, high school coaches, say that colleges are waiting longer on the uh, the high school kids because that you know they're waiting to see what's out there portal wise and. And things of that nature. Kind of talk about that landscape and how it's changed, maybe just in the last couple of years. Sure, it's it certainly changed. And um, again, it's kind of it's even changed from when we got here to now because the portal was new when we were here with Bobby, and, and we made a killing. We flipped the roster twice, um, and, it, and it was really good stuff. Now, every single team is waiting on the portal, which in turn has opened up some really good high school athletes. Um, to us in our in our organization. So we still believe in a sense of grassroots recruiting to where we are going to have slots for high school kids, period, because we think that we can retain and develop within our program because we've proven it. And then you get your plug-and-play guys that you need immediate impact players at. So I, I really like our model. I like um, what how we go about recruiting, and I think we're doing it the right way which also, you know, having the ability to award our all-conference guys with the help of the FPA, um, I just think we have a, a, a really good balance. And, and that's the message I would think you would give for local kids is, hey, you know, we're, we're watching you. We're just going to be a little more patient about, you know, what we do here because we have to weigh all options, correct? Oh, yeah, we're watching them for sure. We're watching, and, you know, if there's a guy that we want on our football team, we'll offer. Uh, we want the best players. I, I don't I don't care if they're high school, JUCO, transfer portal, guys that fit our program and guys that we can think come, they can come in and be an impact on our football team. We want you here. Again, all local guys need to understand that if you're good enough to play at this level, you'll have a shot to play at Missouri State. You know, speaking of locals, kind of give me an update on some of the guys, you know, that people are familiar with the names locally, you know, the Cooper Roys, Cole Forbachers, Caden Wiest, J.J. O'Neal. You, you got a bunch of them over there that were stars here in the area. How are they uh, performing? Are, are there some that are that are on a red shirt plan this year? Kind of fill me in. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And that goes into saying what we just talked about. I mean, we I, I personally feel like we got the best of the best in the region, um, and they had a lot of different opportunities to go different places. Caden Weiss just had two forced fumbles against the win against UT Martin, which was phenomenal. Um, I, and again, Cole hasn't had a chance to play very much on the field, but he was absolutely elite last week and giving us a look at the um, running quarterback from Youngstown State, which I feel helped us win the football game. He's still developing. He's doing a good job. Um, JJ last week got the start because – you know, P.J. Hall was down and injured, and even when P.J. is in, he's been rotating in and out, um, continuing to pr- progress and do a good job. Andrew Link uh, still working hard, still trying to um, <clears throat> build on a few things to where he can, you know, get some more plays on Saturday. But I'm, I'm really pleased with our local guys and how they are uh, helping our program. What uh, is the process now for the the big roster jump? I mean, are you are you adding more kids? Obviously, this year, have you started getting more commitments? Kind of take us to that uh, through that plan from the FCS to FBS uh, roster increase. Yeah, well, for right now, it hasn't changed tremendously because we're still operating um, with our sixty three scholarships to fill eighty five. Mm-hmm. Um, in the off season, that will jump to 85 for 85, so everybody will be on basically full scholarship with the FBS rule being in place. Um, and then hopefully that roster limit will jump to 105 so that we can have some more some more players on the team because one thing around here that's hampered us the last few years, I know Coach Gutton has spoke on it, um, is, is our roster restrictions. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we've only carried 95 guys on our roster, and most of the teams we're playing against have about 120. Um, and and that, that presents challenges later on in the year, being able to keep guys healthy, being able to keep rotating guys in. Um, so we'll just continue to bolster the spots we need to bolster. Again, you went up front, so we've got our eyes closely on the pieces we need for offensive and defensive line and then get some difference makers on the perimeter. 
You've been here for a while now. Your your thoughts on uh, football in Southwest Missouri? Can can it feed your program? Obviously, you look at your roster, and you've been doing a great job of getting the the best of the best. But do you see it continuing to to improve? Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's an area we'll always keep an eye on, um, and make sure that we are keeping the best players around here at home at Missouri State. Um, now, one thing that will happen is we'll have years that fluctuate. You'll have years that there are you know, zero guys in the recruiting class, and then there will be guys like there were two years ago where there's 10 to 12. Um, again, that, that depends on what's available. It depends on who fits us. And the one thing I will say, and you can put it on the billboard, is if you can play and you fit our program, you will have an opportunity in Missouri State. Um, and I think that's important because as this brand continues to grow and it becomes more of a national brand than ever, uh, we will not take our eyes off local talent. We want to keep a fence around our Missouri area, KC area, and we're going to show that this week when we get out. We'll be in Kansas City, St. Louis, local. Uh, we'll be all over the place making sure we get our eyes on some prospective student-athletes. But by the same uh, token, going FBS and, and Conference USA, you're going to expand your, your visibility in, in recruiting as well, right, and maybe hit some new areas? Yeah, what's well, been interesting, Scott, even since we've been here, we, we've really gone coast to coast. I mean, we, we'll fly guys out to Cali. We'll go down to South Florida. Um, we're, we're really, you know, the, the way our staff is built, we're all from different hot spots of the country. We've all recruited great areas. Um, we'll continue to maintain our national presence. And the one thing that I think the people of Missouri State and the Missouri State faithful can have faith in and think is pretty cool is you go into all these hotbeds of recruiting, Florida, Georgia, Arkansas, California, Alabama, you know, St. Louis, Kansas City. People know what the bear is. People are talking about Missouri State Bears, what we're doing within our program, the guys we're, we have on our roster and, and our future. So things are going extremely well. And there's no better time to be a bear. Let's see how good you are at Coach Speak with our final question. What's a good season for Ryan Beard and what's a great season for Ryan Beard this year? Yeah, this is uh, luck, luckily I've got practice because I've got it for the last six months. Um, <laughs> the one thing we focused on is going one and zero every week. Hell, I just challenged the staff and our team and our team meeting about what can we do this week to to win the day and win the week. Well, how can we get better? What do we need to emphasize on the last five games we've played that we can continue to grow our program? And the next week it'll be about beating Illinois State. I think. The one thing that we have done the best job possible of is staying in the moment. We believe in being where your feet are and trying to make the most out of every single day. So success is uh, whatever shakes out at the end of the year, and hopefully we can make it happen. Very good. And that was the correct answer. You you are getting a lot better at this, Ryan. So, hey, (laughs) appreciate your time. Always my pleasure to catch up with you, and go Bears. Thanks a lot. I hope you have a great week. Go Bears. You bet. Thanks, Ryan. That's going to do it for another edition of Around the Ozark Sports Scene. A big thanks to our longtime sponsor, Fast Break Sports. Of course, it's your home for all things sports and sports collectibles, memorabilia. Thanks for that man cave. They've got it all at Fast Break Sports on South Campbell. And we welcome a great new sponsor to the show, uh, The Pitch, one of my favorite places to catch lunch or, or dinner. Of course, it's over in the Southern Hills Shopping Center on East Glenstone, or East Sunshine, excuse me, 2924 East Sunshine. Love the pizza, the calzones, the sandwiches. Got a great Reuben sandwich, cold beverages, plenty of TVs to watch sports coverage each week. Big thanks to Brian Bevel and The Pitch for coming on board and sponsoring Around the Ozark Sports Scene. We'll start a new segment for them. That's our three things to watch, brought to you by The Pitch for this weekend. Going to kind of pick out things to get on your radar to watch uh, TV-wise, get out live, whatever the case may be. But this weekend coming up, you got the Major League Baseball playoffs. Congratulations to the Kansas City Royals and their fans. Tremendous turnaround by the Royals. And, of course, they've got that uh, star, Bobby Witt Jr., who's uh, on a Hall of Fame-type track now here early in his career. But good luck to the Royals in the playoffs. Uh, Mizzou football, their first really true test in SEC play outside of the uh, surprising uh, Vanderbilt double overtime game. But Mizzou goes to... College Station, Texas, and takes on Texas A&M in an 11 a.m. kickoff on Saturday. That would be a great one to watch at the pitch as well. And then Monday night football. Kansas City Chiefs are home uh, at Arrowhead to take on the New Orleans Saints. Kind of one of the early surprises with their offensive attack. 
uh, Monday night football, of course, uh, kick off around 730 that night, and it'd be the first game for the Chiefs without Rashi Rice, their star wide receiver, who looks like he's going to miss the rest of the season uh, with a knee injury. Uh, so we'll see if Patrick Mahomes and company and Travis Kelsey can get it uh, going on primetime TV, which they seem to find themselves playing on quite frequently as the two-time defending Super Bowl champions. Again, thanks to Fast Break Sports and our new sponsor, The Pitch. That's going to do it for this week's episode. We'll see you next week around the Ozark Sports League.